Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space. Welcome to Amp It Up August. We're on fantastic week three. Two seconds. We're on fantastic week three. And this week is masculine gifts. Now, I must admit, I don't really have any males in my life. I don't do a lot of masculine things. But I come up with this fantastic idea. I was walking through my cheap $2 shop. I had to grab a couple of things for another project. And I come across this money. It would be lovely if this was real, hey? Um, so there's two different sorts. So I grabbed those and grabbed some small notebooks and decided to make some pocketbooks for the men in your life. Now I do have a process video of them... Um, being made at the end of this video so feel free to stay tuned and it's a real talking video just showing you how I covered these and how I um, did the inserts basically I turned that paper in that money into pattern paper and I'll show you more of that in the video so if you want to know how I did that stay tuned so these are little like passport size notebooks and I thought the males in your life could use these as ideas books shopping books personally I'd use it as what I need at Spotlight, what I need at Lincraft, what I need at Daiso, you get the drift. But a male could turn the same thing and use it for, I don't know, Bunnings list, super cheap list, anything you like. So they're basic little notebooks. The first half has got lines, the second half has got perforations. Ladies, you could also give this to your man if you're sending him out shopping and doing the grocery shopping. You could write the grocery shopping list in here for him and he's got a nice little book to go and um, do the grocery shopping with. So I thought it would be something fun to put the money on the front. Um, so each of them are slightly different. There's two different types of the notes, so I did some of each. The books are really reasonable too. I think they're a pack of two for $2.50, so they make great affordable little gifts. So this is my Amp It Up August with Heavenly Imaginings, aka and the amazing Amanda Christina as my take on masculine gifts. I suppose I could call them gender, gender neutral gifts because you could also give them to a girl as well. I may include these in happy mail when I send out happy mail um, and I don't do any male happy mail, I only do female happy mail. So they could go for either one. But this is my um, interpretation of a masculine gift. It doesn't have any pink frilly things on it. It doesn't have any purple. Did you notice I didn't use any $5 notes? That's because none came in the kit. Both kits didn't have $5 notes, which I thought was really cool. So stay tuned. On the end of this video, I will tack on the um, process video, as I said. But please do go check out the amazing ladies that are collabing with um, myself and Amanda, 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 Amanda Christina, Heavenly Imaginings on YouTube, for her Amp It Up August. Uh, this is week three, so you've seen our fantastic two projects so far, and there's one to come next Sunday and check out all the other ladies masculine creations it's amazing when we're given a theme and everyone comes up with really cool stuff i've been so impressed so far with all the other videos i've been checking out and i can't wait till sunday at 12 pm to um to get on um the videos are released between 12 pm and 2 pm yeah 12 pm and 2 pm um so get on and check out the ladies other projects and support them all give them a subscribe and be inspired for some Christmas gifts. Now on to the process video. Thanks for watching. So you've just seen the intro for um, my little project for Amp It Up August. So if you're continuing to watch this, you obviously want to know how I made them. So doing this in a bit of a reverse order. <coughs> I haven't actually made the project yet. <laughs> Gonna film that first bit of the video after I make them. <coughs> So, okay, now what I want to do is open up these. As I said in the intro, this, or as I will say in the intro, because <laughs> I'm doing this backwards, this um, prompt really stumped me, masculine gifts. Now, I don't have a man in my life, I don't have a brother in my life, I don't have a father in my life, I don't have a son in my life, I don't do a lot of male gifts, so I'm a bit of a, our house is a bit of a female only zone. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, should I? Um, so this one really stumped me. So I made something that could be used for a male and either a female as well. 
So I saw these little, these were $2.50 from a junkie $2 shop and I saw them the other day when I was walking through the junkie $2 shop. I had to get some other things and then I spotted these and I thought, oh, I could do something with these. So this is play money, um, Australian play money and it's nice to see the $100 note because I never usually see that. And I didn't know which one I wanted to use, so I got both. They were only $2.50 each. Lexus will probably use the money after me. Um, then I grabbed these little notebooks. So I thought these were $2.50, so these are $1.25 each. They make a nice, affordable gift. I don't even know what they're like on the inside. Because I don't read Japanese. What are they like on the inside? They're lined and they're supposed to be perforated by the looks of it. They're perforated, so they're a little stitched. Ah, there's the perforated ones. Okay. So they have line pages, it looks like, at the first half. I think that's sort of what the picture said. And then it has perforated tear-out pieces at the back. So I got black, white, green, and white. Yeah, I suppose that's what I meant on the picture, but as I said, it was all in Japanese. So I thought these were cute little books. Nice pocket size, they're almost a passport size. So now I've got to decide whether I'm actually going to stick this money on or I'm going to <coughs> excuse me, use the money to make some pattern paper on my printer and then use the pattern paper. So I've got four, so I will do four. I won't bore you in the whole four of them. Um, and I've got some ideas of other stuff to do in here with this as well. So the first decision is... Do I want to, how do I want to attach? What is that big thing? Ah, that big thing says play money. That's interesting. Does this one have it on it? Ah, Australian play money in big, in big things. So they can't be obviously reproduced. Um, okay. I think I'm going to go make some, turn these into pattern paper on my laser printer. Um, unfortunately, I can't film that process because that's in my office and I can't move the camera, but I'll show you the paper when I come back. Just deciding if I like the white lines. Let me go do one with the white lines, print one off, see if I like it. If I don't like it, I'll cut all the white lines off and I'll print some others. And I'm thinking, I want to try putting some of the coins on. So I think I'm going to put some of the coins on, like, pretty side down. What's that? That's got a coin on it. Oh, and that says kangaroo, but that says play money. Maybe I'll put... Sorry, I'm working out this as I go. That says a big copy in the middle of it. Didn't really want... I suppose I can put some of these down. Okay, I'm going to go experiment with that. 20 cents are the wrong colour. What have we got? Dollars, 20 cents, 50 cents, and $2.00. It's interesting and in this one we've got that looks like one dollar that looks like half it's got a half written on it we don't have half dollars in Australia that's hilarious yeah it's got instead of like 50 cents it's got half on it okay and what's this one you're probably all eager to get into the project and I'm sitting here fuzzing around with coins. What's this one say? This one says a fifth on it. One out of five. That's just funny. What's this last one said? This should be five cents. So one out of ten. No, that's ten cents. That's super funny. Okay, let me go make some pattern paper and I shall be back. Okay, so I've been to my printer and got some more ideas whirling around in my head. My head has to stop whirling with ideas. Um, so I took the money, I'll show you the sheets I did. I actually printed more than I needed because I thought I would share them in some happy mail. Okay, so that's... I discovered when I was putting them out there's no five dollar notes in either of them, which is interesting. You think between one of the sets I'd have a five dollar note. And while I was printing them, I thought, gee, why do I go buy plastic money? I could just do it with real money. And I thought, there's probably some law about photographing real money. And I don't want to get in trouble. So we'll go with the play money. Why I'm putting these back like this, I have no idea. Because I'm anal retentive like that, I suppose. I may use the originals. I may not. Um, but I did some with coins and some not. 
put those up there and hopefully don't spill them off. Let's throw the coins in there. So the first one I did was with coins. I've got these backwards. So the first one I did was with coins and they come out quite nice. This is on a laser printer. I've got a fairly good laser printer for work. So they come out quite well. I didn't want them actually looking like real, real money. So, and I like the size of these ones. So then I decided I need to cover up. I had too many white spaces because I'm thinking I can get two covers out of one sheet of paper. So then I covered it up and then I did five of those. Because once I've set this up, I should have scanned it as well, but I didn't. I just printed off my printer. Um, and <clears throat> so I did five copies. I can always copy these again or throw them on. Um, so I did some more, just not so higgledy piggledy. I might use do some of each. I like things higgledy piggledy. And then I did this smaller play money. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Okay, some more of those. Smaller play money. Again, I could probably get one or two, or maybe one cover out of that. Um, and then I did some, I was thinking how else could I use it and I've got an idea of using some singles as well. So, let's get started. What one am I going to do first? I'm going to do this one. I also like the size of this money. If I went and got real money, it'd be like twice the size and then I have to shrink it and muck around with that. And I was like, no. Excuse me, motorbike going past. So I'm just going to, how am I going to do this? Because they've got quite a, like a shiny cover. So, first I was thinking I was going to take these and sort of Mod Podge them on. I wonder if that would work better, cut out singles. Let's try one and do it a different way. And if it doesn't work, hey, you won't see this video. So I've got some double-sided tape, I've got some glue stick. I'm going to combine those on the cover, I think. So let's do some double-sided tape to start with. I haven't done this before, like covering these books before, so I don't know... What's the best way? Let's go around the corner. So this is expressive tape, so it's really sticky tape. And I'm trying to go, should be going close to the edge, shouldn't I? Probably don't know, I'm probably out of screen, I'm sorry. I'm trying to go close to the edge as I can. Hoping to get no like air bubbly things. Like hoping to get the paper nice and straight, but we'll see how we go. So I thought these could be used as like little books in your purse, or a man could carry them in their wallet or in their back pocket um, if they wanted um, like to run a budget or maybe a shopping list their wife could write their shopping list for the man in the, um, it's probably way too much tape, okay, let's, am I going to get two out of it, yes, okay, so let's take this tape off, so it's a bit hard thinking of a masculine gift, I thought oh, I'll patch a card, like a, do a series of handmade cards to like give the mail to give to people and then I was like no let's just do something totally different now I want to stick some sticky tape I've done this before with just sticky tape and it tends to bubble where the sticky tape's not so I'm going to go over the sticky tape the double sided tape and the non sticky part I found covering books this works really really well so I'm going over the sticky tape and that gives you a bit of wiggle room as well if in case you put it in the wrong spot because this is quite um, quite sticky sticky tape so and it's hard because the book is round usually I do this when the book is flat now would have been a good idea to cut that white edge off first because then I can line it up oh no if I well I've got six books or oh, four books so if I stuff one up I stuff one up <laughs> and I'll just cut that bit of filming out okay so just gonna line it up just coming in a little, I'm going to cut it flush with the edge, but I do have that little bit of white there. So just giving that a nice press down. The camera's probably having a hissy fit because I've got white on white on white. So turn it over. Sorry about the wiggling of the table. 
going to get a new table soon, so excited to get to go shopping for some furniture because I'm sick of this stressful table. Um, so I'll take the rest of this tape off. I do like using the, just it's just a cheap glue stick from Audi, but it seems to work really well. And as I said, it gives you some wiggle room over your double-sided tape. Otherwise, I find the double-sided tape catches too much. And then, I know, I suppose I could do it just with the glue, but I find the double-sided tape also holds it tight as well. So it's like a double whammy. So I'll put some down the spine. And then I will, I'm hoping just to fold the paper up onto here. As I said, I've never covered books like this. Usually when I do art journal covers or um, ju like junk journals, my piece of, my book isn't made, so I don't have to sort of go around a fold. So what I'll do is put some on the paper there as well, just so I can get a good coverage on that spine. And if I, ugh, avoid getting icky glue all over me. If I sort of gently roll that up onto the spine and then sort of press from the spine that way, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. I should have cut this bit of paper in half first. Let's just roughly cut it off. So I'm going to cut it flush with the end. I should have folded it over, but my paper's not that big. And I ran the money the wrong way. If I was going to do that, I'd run the money the other way on my printer. So just giving that a good press down. Roll my sleeves up. A lid black on my glue. That's looking rather icky. I tend to press too hard and squish the glue everywhere. Ah, sticky fingers, sticky fingers. So I just want to get a nice seal down on that spine. Now I can go through and cut off. I've got glue spewing out the sides, but that's okay. Just make sure it's on the bit I'm going to cut off. So now I can just go around. I've got a guide to cut against the edge of the book. As I said, you can bring them over and sort of cover them but I decided after I put my money on the printer, I didn't think of that. That's okay. This is sort of a short, like a short term present. Once the book's filled up, I don't envisage like the present being kept. Like if it's a shopping list or something, you're not gonna keep it, wanna keep it forever or um, a book to keep track of your finances or something. I think everyone should have like a shopping list to go shopping with because I should because I tend to go to the supermarket for three things and forty dollars later. Oh that's on special. Oh I need that. Oh that looks new and interesting. Oh I could try that. I'm terrible. Maybe I should go back to shopping online and then I can't do that. <laughs> The food always gets eaten, but it just blows that week's budget. Okay. Oh, they're looking quite cool. What I might do is let that one sit for a while so the glue really takes just squishing that spine down. Now I want to take some of those single sheets I had and I want one of each denomination. So it'd be one of each colour. So there's a blue and a yellow. That's a red and a green together. Mm. Of course not. What was hard when I was laying these down on my printer is they're upside down, so I couldn't see which numbers I'd put down. And when I was doing them randomly, I was trying to put them in different spots. So these ones, I do want to cut them white off. I did the first scan. I said before I went to scan them and print them, I may cut the white off the notes, but I like, I didn't think I'd like the definition of the white between the notes, but I think if I'd done that, then it would be, look like... I don't know. It would look funnier as opposed to just funny, hey? So I'm just going to trim these up and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with these inside the book. It's only four I have to cut so you don't have to sit and watch me cut. And these aren't perfect. If they're a little wobbly, you could do them on a paper trimmer, but that involves getting up and going and getting my paper trimmer. Good old Tim Holtz scissors will work. And I will go ahead and do the other three. And, well, you would have already seen all the finished covers anyway. Because I'm doing this bit, bit, video backwards. 
just in case people don't have all time, like a lot of time, this is probably going to run to about 40 minutes. Um, if people don't have 40 minutes to sit there and watch with amp it up. August. I thought I'd do a quick intro so you can see the project and then I will tack this on for any of my loyal subbies that like to hear me waffle. Okay, now what I'm planning on doing with these is creating some sections within the book. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold these in half long ways. I had this brilliant idea when I was standing at my printer. I'm thinking what else can I do with them because covering a cover is a bit boring. I'm sorry if the project is a bit boring. I thought it was a good project. I thought it was something different as well. So I'm just going to fold all these in half. Yes, I could go get my scoreboard, but again, that would involve getting up and going and finding it. <laughs> One day I'll have a super organised craft space and everything will have its home, and then I will be able to find everything quite easily. Now, I'm going to be like this, and I'm going to put these in order because I'm just going to be like that. Okay. So these are going to create four tabs. I was thinking, oh, I could tab off sections for the book. So you could have like different sections in the book if you had like a shopping list, if you had like a Kmart list, if you had like a, well, if you're a crafter, you'd have a spotlight list, Dylan craft list. <laughs> and let's not just say men aren't crafters as well. There's a few in the crafting community that I actually watch and enjoy. Um, so I'm going to section off four um, sections so just going to find the middle of the book so if I put one ideally if I put one in the middle no that will only give me three I could put one at the start there there and there okay start there 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 okay so I'm going to go in the middle find the middle of the book because we've got writing at one side and we've got then the plain pages starting so let's find that signature is that in the middle? Oh, this book's done funny. I think it's got two signatures. Oh, it's got, okay. It's got one really fat signature. So two thirds of the book is the writing and then a third is this. So if I go front, there, there, and halfway there, that will work. And I'm just trying to be, oh, I've got a big crease down the front. What has it been? I would probably suggest leaving these a while before you go and do anything in the book like this, but. As I say in a lot of my videos, do as my advice tells you, don't do as what I do, because I usually do things wrong. Okay, so I'm going to take these and I want, I want them to go, ideally what I'm going to do is do this on the page, so I was just making sure I got them up the right way. So ideally I want to get a good coverage of, I should have some scrap on my table so I don't glue everything. Okay, oh, at least with the purple glue I can see where it is. Okay, so I'm going to take this first page of black paper and see if I can line it up with my fold line and fold it over. Because I wanted to put tabs with the sections, but I might have just said this. Um, but I didn't want them hanging outside the book, so you can see that, which is really cool. So just give that a bit of a squish and guess what I did that's the $10 and the one I wanted at the front you know what they're not going to be in order because I just buggered that up oh, really Melinda so let's just totally do these out of order let's do the $100 one next all for me saying I'm going to do them in order but it doesn't really matter you're only going to see the colors on the side anyway so this one goes on this side here. Excuse my big head if it's getting in the way. I just I can't set a line things up unless things are nearly on my nose. Because for any new subbies and anyone coming from the other Fantastic Ladies channels, I have problems with low vision. And sometimes I have to be quite close to what I'm doing to see what I'm doing. Especially the line things up I find. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. So basically just pressing that down either side in the middle and then on your edge of your book you'll see your different sections. So we're going to put one at the front here. Let's go. $20 at the front. So I've said it before. Welcome to everyone from everyone else's channels. Fantastic bunch of Aussie ladies. Can't believe it's August already. Like where did this year go? 2019 has just flown by. Seriously, we're in August already. Where did like February, March, April, March, February, March, April, May, June go? July go? 
Ah, sorry. Should have got my page ready before I went and stuck. So, oh, is that the reason? No, it's two pages. I thought it was rather thick. Oh, no, that's stuck together by the looks of it. Is it? No, it's just me having it stuck. So that's like a... Has that even got English? Nope. Oh, it does have English. Personal data. So we'll leave that page. We'll put on this next page. I didn't realise that was the front of the book. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, me and glue just don't mix today. I'm either sticking my fingers in it. I wonder if I could do that. And that would line it up. No. So just lining it up on that side, folding it over. Trying not to stick my fingers in glue that are all goopy at the moment. One good thing about doing these on a laser printer, and I do have a laser printer for work that I use for my um, scrapbooking as well. Um, oh, it's my own business, laser printer for work. I'll clarify that before anyone thinks, oh, she's using a laser printer for work, for crafting stuff. Um, so yeah, I own my own business for anyone new. Um, so I can use it for both purposes. Um, you don't have to worry about, that's what I was getting at, laser printing. You don't have to worry about an inkjet printer when you put glue on it. Even this sort of glue may run with the ink. You might have to just be a little bit careful. But this ink will be waterproof. Just finding my last page to stick this other one on. Just put that in there as a marker. So this is our last little tab. And I will go off camera and complete these last four books. They'll be basically the same. And you would have already seen them all. Um, you would have already seen them all in the intro part of this video. So I'm just trying to get that straight again. Straight is not my forte, so if they're not straight, who cares? So covered the front. We've got our four little tabs so they're easy to see. So this, if this was my personal book, this would be things I'm looking for at Spotlight. Next section, things I'm looking for at Lincraft. <laughs> things I'm looking for. Where else do I go? Daiso. I usually Daiso, I just grab whatever's new. And things I'm looking for at other craft stores. But if you're a male, you could have different sections for different blokey shops. You might have Bunnings. You might have, I don't know, where else do blokes shop? Oh, car place. Super car, cheap auto, whatever it's called. I don't know, I don't drive cars. What else could you have? Ideas for the missus birthday. That would be a good section to have. And you could have miscellaneous at the back. So there we go, that one's finished. I will go cover these three off camera because you don't need to see me do the same process again and again and again. That would get a bit boring. I'm probably boring as it is. So again, thank you very, very much for watching. If you're still watching at the end, and definitely, definitely go check out the super, super talented ladies that are joining us with the Aussie Ampy Up collab ran by Amanda Christina, aka Heavenly Imaginings, on YouTube, and all the links are below. So go check out the other ladies. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>